what's up guys welcome to the channel in this video we will take a look at the overview and a brief background of the FISMA law ANA process and the risk management framework but before we do that a free way to support the channel is by subscribing to help the channel grow if you have not yet subscribed All right let's get started FISMA the Federal Information Security Modernization Act is the United States regulation that defines a comprehensive framework to protect government information operations and assets against natural and man-made threat. FISMA was signed into law as part of the Electronic Government Act of 2002. The law was enacted in 2002. It was called Federal Information Security Management Act, which was placed under the Commerce Department. In 2014, the Management Act became Modernization Act, codifying Department of Homeland Security, DHS, authority to administer the law for non-national security systems. As we can see from the DHS Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, it says Federal Information Security Modernization Act. Federal Information Security Modernization Act of 2014, FISMA 2014, updates the federal government's cybersecurity practices by codifying the Department of Homeland Security DHS authority to administer the implementation of information security policies for non-national security federal executive branch systems, including providing technical assistance and deploying technology to such systems, amending and clarifying the Office of Management and Budget OMB Oversight Authority over federal agency information security practices and by requiring OMB to amend or revise OMB Circular A130 to eliminate inefficient and wasteful reporting. Moving on, NIST, the National Institute of Standard and Technology, is the unit within the U.S. Department of Commerce tasked with developing guidelines, standards, and publication to govern the implementation of the law, which is FISMA. Founded in 1901, NIST is the non-regulatory federal agency within the U.S. Department of Commerce. NIST's mission is to promote U.S. innovation and industrial effectiveness by advancing measurement science, standard, and technology in ways that enhance economic security and improve our quality of life. In 2002, when the FISMA law was enacted, DHS was not in existence. So the oversight responsibility of the law was placed under the U.S. Department of Commerce, which in turn gave the responsibility for providing the guidelines, standard, and publication to govern the FISMA law to, to a unit or a bureau within the U.S. Department of Commerce called the NIST, National Institute of Standard and Technology. As we can see from the U.S. Department of Commerce, under the bureaus and offices, we have the National Institute of Standard and Technology, NIST, listed. The ANA process. The assessment and authorization, ANA process, is a comprehensive assessment and or evaluation of an information systems policies technical and non-technical security components, documentation, supplemental safeguards, and vulnerabilities. It describes the end-to-end -end process for ensuring that all federal information systems and applications adhere to and are in compliance with the Federal Information Security Modernization Act. The ANA process used to be called the Certification and Accreditation, CNA process. To be in line with the RMF assessment step and authorization step, the name Assessment and Authorization, ANA, was adopted. New information systems and applications that are used to support federal government agencies must be subjected to a formal assessment and authorization, ANA, process before being deployed in the production environment. Legacy or old system must be subjected to ANA process every three years or when significant changes are made to these systems, whichever comes first. But then again, lately we see that ongoing authorization and continuous control monitoring is gradually replacing the traditional three-year ATO cycle. The assessment phase consists of the following. We have the security control testing. That is when you have your independent assessment team coming in to test your control manually. And then we have vulnerability scanning using automated tools such as Nessus, Nespos, OpenVAS, WebInspect. Then we also have penetration testing. 
if it is part of the rules of engagement, the ROE. Typically, the penetration testing is not part of the rule of engagement or the rules of engagement, but it is, if it is part of the rules of engagement, then the penetration testing will be conducted on the system to see if the system can be penetrated or if the system can be hacked. Assessment activities are also known as what well, security control assessment or the SCAR. And then this control is very important. The, the CA2 enhancement one is the NIST 853 control that requires all federal agencies to employ an independent assessor to assess their system for assessment and authorization ATU purposes. All right, so taking a look at the control, the CA2, the enhancement one is saying that control assessment, independent assessors. Employ independent assessors or assessment team to conduct control assessment. All right, so that means that if you are a security analyst or an ISO and you are involved in the categorization step, the select step, and the implementation step, it means you cannot be part of the assessment team. So that means that an independent assessment team or an independent assessor should be conducting the testing at this level. Because if you are part of the team that conducted this step and then you also test, it means you're testing your own work and that is what the, an independent issue. And that would be what a conflict of interest. So in order to, uh, to satisfy the CA2 enhancement one control, it means anybody, security analyst, ESO, that was part of this step should not be part of this step. It should be an independent assessment team. Also, to understand the ANA process better, you should read page 42 of this document, Risk Management Framework for Information Systems and Organization, a system lifecycle approach for security and privacy. Revision 2. It starts with the process, and then you can go down and read more about what the whole RMF process is all about. This document is about 183 pages, and it talks about the complete RMF process if you really want to understand what the whole RMF process is all about. So going down, you notice that it starts with the prepared step. So it gives you the prepared tax, the organization level. Uh, it gives you the tax and the outcomes, organization level. It gives you the roles and the responsibility, you know, the potential input, expected output, Primary responsibility, head of agency, chief information officer, senior agency official for privacy, supporting roles. We have the authorizing official, authorizing official designated representative. And then you have the discussion. So you can go down and read. This is the step zero, the prepared step. You go down, read the categorization step, read the authori uh, authorization boundaries. Now we have the categorized step. We have the select step, we have the implement step, we have the assess step. Under the assessment step, we have the plan of action and milestones. We have the authorized step. And then we have the monitor step. So this document, 837, Revision 2 will give you the complete overview of all the RMF steps and then you can understand the roles and responsibilities. These are very important, especially when you are taking your CAP examination or CAP certification. So this document is your go-to document to understand the complete overview of the RMF process. All right, moving on. So all federal information systems will require an authority to operate ATO after completing the assessment to ensure that all risk in the information systems are reviewed and accepted by authorizing official of the agency. That is the authorization step. You know, risk management framework. The framework that directs the ANA process is the risk management framework, which has six main steps and a preparation step that was added to it recently. So all in all, we have seven steps in all. The step zero is the preparation step. And then we have the six core or the six main step, the traditional six main steps. NIST 837 Risk Management Framework provides the guidelines for complying with the FISMA regulation. It also outlines the six main steps towards attaining compliance, just like we saw in the document on page 42. So these are the six or the seven steps, including the preparation step. 
So the categorization step here deals with if you have a system, before you can actually implement any security control or any security safeguard and countermeasure on the system, you really have to understand what the system is all about, right? And the sensitivity of a system is determined by the amount or is determined by the type of data that is being stored or processed on the system, right? So in order for us to know exactly how to protect the system, we need to understand what is the impact level. Is this system going to be a low impact system, a moderate impact system, or a high impact system? And how do you determine that? You determine that by the type of data the system is going to be processing. And that is what is primarily going to be the focus on categorization step. You really have to understand what your system is processing before you can protect the system adequately. Because if you don't know the value, you might tend to what overprotect or underprotect the system. So that's why categorization step is very, very important. Once you miss the ball here, it affects the rest of the, uh, the framework. All right, so the document that helps us to do this categorization primarily is the FIPS 199 and then the SP860 volume two for the information types. And then once you determine your impact level, you have to do what control selection based on the determination of the impact level here. If it is low, moderate, or high impact level, the baseline will detect what controls to select at the select step. So this select step here, the, uh, the document that helps us to do the selection is what the 853. Very important, right? It has all the controls. And now for the baseline, we have 853B that has all the baseline in the new Ref5. So moving down, we, moving on, we have the implementation. So the implementation step is when after all these controls has been selected, you know, the system architect and the engineers, they have to implement some of these technical controls here. And then the security analyst and the ESO will implement the non-technical control, which is the primarily documentation, right? All right, so the document here, that the document that helps us to do this implementation, even though we have multiple documents that help us to do the implementation at this level, but the main one that is typically being considered here is what, 800, 800 160 for the implementation step. And then once the, uh, the controls have been implemented, and again, anybody who's involved here should not be involved here technically because if that happens, it means that you are testing your own work, right? So this is why it is uh, the CA2 enhancement one is calling for independent assessment team to test this control to avoid any conflict of interest. So this here, the document that help us to do this testing is 853A. The A stands for the word assessment. That helps you to narrow down the question that you should be asking when you're testing this control. And then one, ev once everything has been tested at this level, you know, uh, the document that is going to be produced at this level will be what the security assessment report and then the plan of action and milestone, which is the poem. And then at this level, and here we also have what the SSP. So the SP with the security assessment report and the plan of action and milestone poem and the executive summary of the system or, or the uh, authorization memo will be passed on to the authorizing official. So the authorizing official, so the authorizing official will review this documentation again, the executive summary, the SSP, security assessment report, plan of action and milestone will be passed on to the authorizing official and then the authorizing official will review this and then authorize the system based on what the full RMF process of what 837 revision 2. So the authorizing official will authorize based on the documentation that are being produced from these levels, including the assessment level as well. And then once you get the ATO, which is going to last for three years, or if any major system, any major changes occur within the system that's going to trigger a new assessment, the system will be pushed onto what continuous control monitoring, whereby a portion of the controls will be tested on a yearly, monthly, you know, quarterly basis until the next authorization or until the next assessment is due. This is the full uh, summary or the overview of the um, RMF process and the ANA process. So I have a video that talks about categorization and uh, uh, selection and implement a little bit of implementation statement and then the assessment. So moving on, we're going to talk about uh, um, uh, authorizing step, what is needed at that level. All right, guys, that's it for this uh, video. If you find this video useful, do like, share, and subscribe if you have not already subscribed. 
please do comment below and let me know your thought on this video and i'll see you in the next video